Hi, my name is Ben, a product expert here at Upkeep. Today, we're going to go over how to data import your checklist tasks into Upkeep. So, for our agenda today, I'll provide a quick overview and demonstration so that you can start importing. Checklists allow you to quickly reuse the same specific task items on multiple different work orders. Most commonly, these are used for inspections where you have a list of subtasks or checklist items to complete as part of a work order. You can import your checklist through a spreadsheet in a comma-separated value format, also known as a CSV. The maximum amount of tasks you can import at a single time is 200, but there is no overall limit. So within each CSV, you can have a maximum of 200 rows imported at each time. There is a specific CSV template that must be used when importing. If you haven't already, you can find the template by navigating to the checklist section within your settings. Then click on the three vertical dot options and click on import checklist. On this page, you can also upload your completed CSV when you're done saving it. So let's get started in filling out the sample template. Do not add, change, or remove any of the column headers found in row one. Since row two has sample data as examples, you can remove that and start adding your data in row two. So here's a quick look at what you might expect from a completed CSV. I'll go through each column and provide a quick explanation on what you can add to this import. Column A is your checklist ID. This is a unique 10 character upkeep assigned ID once the checklist is created. If you are importing new checklists, you can leave this field blank. If you are importing new tasks to an existing checklist, the checklist ID will be needed. You can find it by clicking into the checklist. In the URL, the ID is the last 10 characters after the forward slash. Column B is your checklist name or the title of this checklist. If you are importing a new checklist and all of its tasks, you will need to make sure that the checklist name is exactly the same on each row. The import is case sensitive and even having an extra space could cause an error. If you're importing new tasks to an existing checklist, you can leave this field blank. You will only need the checklist ID in column A. Column C is your checklist description. You can add what the checklist will be used for or other details. You can also leave this field blank if you're importing new tasks to an existing checklist and already have the checklist ID in column A. Column D is your checklist category if you would like to categorize this checklist. You can leave this field blank if you're importing new tasks to an existing checklist and already have a checklist ID. Column E is your checklist subcategory. You can leave this field blank if importing new tasks to an existing checklist and already have the checklist ID. Column F is the task name or task title. It can be an instruction or a question. You will need to add this so that the task can be imported. Column G is the task type. You can choose from task, text, number, multiple choice, meter, or checklist, which is also known as an inspection check. There are only six exact acceptable values, so be sure to check the guide for more information. Column H is only needed if you selected multiple choice as your task type. You can leave this blank if you did not select multiple choice as the task type. Each option needs to be separated by a vertical line. You can find the symbol on the same keyboard key as the backslash symbol. Columns I and J are only needed if you would like to assign a specific person and or asset to this task. Same as your checklist ID, you can find the ID by clicking into the user in the last 10 characters of the URL, or if you click into the asset, the last 10 characters of that URL. Column K is your meter ID. 
If you chose the meter task type, this is a required field. If you did not choose meter as your task type, be sure to leave this blank. Once all of your data has been entered into the CSV, save it. As a personal recommendation, if you are new to importing, it may be best to start in small batches, maybe five to 10 rows when importing. This way you can ensure that it is importing the way you'd like before you import it all. Once you have saved the CSV, upload it on the same page that you downloaded the template from. If everything went well, you should see the green notification on the top right saying that the import was successful. You can now add your imported checklist to a work order. A couple of things to keep in mind. First, when importing new tasks to an existing checklist, you will only need the checklist ID, which is column A. You can skip columns B through E. Second, the import is case sensitive and even an extra space could cause an error. Be sure to check the guide in our article for the acceptable values and example entries. So that was a quick rundown on importing your checklists and your checklist tasks. I've included the link to our support article below with more information. If you have any questions or feedback, please let us know. I hope this was helpful and we'll talk to you soon.